and I ask, what are your intentions with this home? How long do you plan to live there? Um, and then that'll dictate like, if it'll line up with your goals of what you're trying to do. Like if, I yeah. wanna, if you're gonna live there for a year and you're gonna rent it and you're gonna own it for 10 years, like it's always a good time. Absolutely. You're gonna, if you're gonna buy and you don't know if you'll be living here in a year, I don't know. Yeah. But each person is, uh, it's a different situation for each, each person, each exact timing of, of the year, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I was having this conversation with another agent yesterday because, you know, buyers typically they are looking for the best deal. They're looking for the best time to buy. And mm. the truth of the matter is there isn't, you're never going to get the best deal. You're never going <clears> to <throat> buy at the perfect time. Like there's always pros and cons to every single market, every single <laughs> timeline. So it ultimately, like you said, it just depends on what your goals are as a homeowner. And you just have to base it around that and, hope that you've made a solid investment and like we say on these all the time like if you plan to hold on to real estate for a long time like you will see a return like the likelihood mm -hmm. is is strong um obviously things can happen but just have confidence in your investment and yeah hey. here prime <laughs> example i have a buddy who moved from lakeland hills washington uh and moved to nevada yeah. uh he just sent me a text today that showed his home value went down roughly 10% since when he bought it, which was about June, yeah. which was kind of the peak of the market. Um, he sent me that and I was like, yeah, 10%, but like, you're not moving. So why right. does it, it doesn't matter. Like I should text him back and go, Hey, make sure to send me the same picture when your home's up 10% and see right. if it's raining. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And a lot of people are in that same exact spot. They're feeling a little bit down about the, purchase that they made a few months ago or earlier this year. But the reality of it is like, if you plan to be there for a while, like it's going to go back up, you know, and mm -hmm. you just, and that's the thing about real estate is it ebbs and it flows and you just have to have confidence. Like I said, that everything will work out in the end and it's going to be okay. Yeah. Uh, we can go a little back and forth. Did you have a top one that you had uh, top of mind? Um, I mean, I think it's just really random ones. I tried to come up with random ones, like one that I get, often is like i'm dating someone and we want to buy a house together should we buy it together or separate like what mm -hmm. does that look like when it comes to title and escrow and the reality of it again is it's it's mostly about you like it doesn't really affect anything on the back end of things the financing doesn't really matter um it the most important part about buying a home with anybody even if you're married and have been yeah. married for a long time is making sure that you have a financial agreement or just an agreement in general of like Mm -hmm. How's this going to work? You know, I know yeah. couples who have been married that like, are just like, we're, it is whatever, or couples, you know, go in, get a lawyer and have them kind of sign up a little contract. If you want to go that far, have something in writing, it's never going to hurt to have anything in writing. Um, but yeah, I, I, in terms of like the financing and the title and escrow, like there's no difference if you're married or unmarried. No. You, uh, can buy, you can buy a house while you're married as separate property, but in Washington, it's community property state. So everything technically is shared amongst spouses, but it doesn't, your marital status really doesn't matter when it comes to buying a home. No, no. Um, I am prime example. Kelsey and I bought before we got married. So. Same with, same with Ben and I. Yeah. 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 I know lots of people who did the generation just, we're in. <laughs> and it's, it's tricky now because, uh, the easiest way to qualify for home for a home now is with someone else. Right. Exactly. Family member, um, even if you're just friends, friends can do it. I've, I, I've made a video talking about how yeah. instead of getting an apartment with three other friends, if you if you have three quality friends that you trust and you're going to live there for two years, why not buy together, build some equity together and then be able to take that out later? Turn in, you know, there's just yeah. there's a lot of opportunity, but it's each individual person that groups decision and it. That's a, that's a very tough one to make. For, I completely understand. It is, yeah. But if it completely works out and it makes sense, do it. Yeah, definitely. No, so that's a random one that I get every now and then, but it's always the same question and no one has clarification. Yeah. Yeah, what happened? I think it cut out. Me? Yeah. Did it just switch back? They just randomly connected to my headphones. So I think We're a mess. Our production is, is horrible. Oh. There we go. Wait, we're back. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I need to like carry my case with me everywhere. Um, um, so yeah, what's another, what's another one that you have on there? I have, um, I have a few more. I'm trying to think of the, the overall, like 
I think this is the big one. What's the timeline for buying? Um, a little ca caveat to that is like, I get a lot of when people reach out, oh, my lease is up X, you know, this month. Um, sometimes there's plenty of time to get it figured out. Sometimes it's like, oh, so we have three months to try and get, beat your beat your lease because yeah. it's, it's tough because the timing doesn't always completely work out. You may not find the exact home you want or a couple of the exact homes right. you want. Um, but a rough timeline, I would say, would be kind of working through it all. I'll work step by step, but um, talking to an agent and lender and then getting pre-approved, doing all three of those things could potentially take two weeks, having both those conversations and then actually working through an application being pre-approved, you know, one to three business days, depending yeah. on the, the complexity of your, of your income and all of that. Um, and then from there being pre-approved, um, searching can take, that's, searching is one of those things where I can't put an answer on it because it could be two days, you find the perfect house, put it, perfect house, put in an offer and get it. Or it could be two months before you see that house. Yeah, um, exactly. But I Again, think that's the, yeah. Go ahead. It's all dependent on you as a buyer. Yeah. Yes. Um, back end though, typically takes 30 days to close. So we're talking two weeks up front, three days or 30 days in the back end. So let's call it six weeks. And then whatever that middle period is for you to find a home, put an offer, get accepted. Yeah. The quickest turnaround I've ever seen was actually a referral that I handed out. They reached mm -hmm. out to me on like a Tuesday. I referred an agent to them that day and they were under contract the next day. And that was, I think they were already pre-approved, mm -hmm. um, but that's the quickest turnaround. Bill. And then they closed 30 days later. So that was, that was an anomaly. Um, but other than that, yeah, I would say it takes an average of like two to three months at a minimum to like really get your search going, be approved, pre-approved, and then find a house and then yeah. back on another 30 days for closing. So. Yeah. yeah. A little bit, it might be a little easier in this market. Yeah. Inventory is still a little bit down, but there's more to choose from and you have more, less competition. So it is easier to get an offer accepted. So that's yeah. why it might speed things up. But yeah, for the most part, I do like that timeline. Yeah, definitely. And we've said this before, but it's never going to hurt to start A, before you're ready and B, like, really before you have an understanding of what's going on. Like yeah. I always recommend doing like even 12 to six months in advance so that you can start to get your ducks in a row. You can start to like, even if you have an incredible credit score, all the money saved up, like it doesn't hurt to put yourself in an even better position or learn mm -hmm. about things that you can do to improve your credit more or save up a little bit in a few months. Like putting yourself in the best position possible is never going to put you at a disadvantage ever. And yeah. so even if you're reaching out, like I, I know there are some agents out there who are like, if you're not ready to buy now, like I don't, I'm not ready to help you. But like both Caden and I, I can speak for both of us. We're like, we're here to help you for as long as it takes. Mm -hmm. um, if that's two years down the line, then like, we'll just keep in touch, you know? Yeah. And so reach out. And if you have questions, then you know, you'll have a resource in both of us. So. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, do you have another one? Yeah, so, uh, often I hear like the question gets asked about like, how much should I save for out of pocket costs when it comes mm -hmm. to buying a home. Um, I should so have wrote that down. Good job. That's um, that's an interesting one because again, it varies. It depends on where you are. Um, but the biggest out of pocket costs are going to be an inspection and sometimes an appraisal. Some mortgage companies will roll that into closing costs, and mm -hmm. maybe you can speak more to that. But some will have you pay it out of pocket. And I think those are around $800 or so. Yeah, it depends on the state. I know um, Arizona ones tend to be closer to about six to seven. Uh, Washington is closer to eight. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So again, it's you can ask your lender that when you get down to it, like, is this going to be an out of pocket cost? Or is this going to be rolled into our uh, closing costs? Um, the other one is an inspection. Um, and those typically cost anywhere from three to like $800 Just depends on the inspector depends on the company. Um, so your realtor should be able to connect you with, with some good inspectors. And I'm trying to think those, you know, any, anything that you're going to want to buy for your house, you're going to, you're going to want to have saved up too. That doesn't mm -hmm. have to do with the closing process. It's got a notification that it switched. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. This is lame. I should just go grab no my more, case. No more of those. Um, no more. <laughs> I could Why to touch on to not touch on that. Them. Not even anywhere close to them. To touch on that, so yeah, out of pocket costs. Um, tip. So like, most of the time, an appraisal will get wrapped in. Um, but 
uh, for most lenders. But then going on top of that, of like total overall costs, depends. I mean, there's some, as in like down yeah. payment, all of that. Uh, you could go anywhere between zero and 5% down as a first time home buyer. Um, so accounting for whatever that percentage down payment is based on the home you want to buy. But then closing costs, um, I typically go off of these two numbers uh, specific. So like I usually go about $10,000 for Oregon and Washington closing costs and about 8,000 for Arizona. And that's directly tied to the amount of taxes. Um, but that's kind of a rough number. But if, if you were like, hey, I need, I can get down payment assistance, but I'm gonna still need to cover closing costs. And I'd say still have 15, like still yeah. have X amount of dollars left over to actually own the home, make some adjustments that you right. really want to, or if something comes up, you're gonna want some money and not be um, house poor is what they say. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. So yeah, what's your next one? Um, let's see here, let's go with, let's go. Just an overall statement, uh, when, I, I, when I'm talking to people and I bring up monthly debts or whatever, I, I get a lot of responses of the remaining balance. Um, and that's actually not the case. All we really care about is that actual monthly payment that you owe that on that debt obligation, not how much overall, um, you know, like oh, say you owe 50,000 student loans. I only care that your payment is only 150. I don't know if sure. those numbers add up or what the interest rate is, but I only care about the 150 to compare against your income. Yeah. Um, that's just a quick statement to make, not so, to answer kind yeah, of something no. I notice. Um, and then what I can qualify for, I'm just kind of working through these, but I'm going to get to the good one. Uh, what can I qualify for? That's just a basic income, monthly debt, and um, overall assets that you have that will combine to, to equal a monthly payment you can take on. But the one I have here is if your spouse has bad credit, can you purchase a home without them? Um, it depends on the program. Uh, in different little scenarios, but like on a conventional, you can purchase a home by yourself. If, you're, if, you're, if your income can take, take that on with monthly debts, you can have your spouse not on the loan, but still have ownership rights in the home, which is a big one, obviously, as a, as a, as a married couple. But then in some programs, if we're not counting income, we can still not count their credit score, but it mm -hmm. takes a monthly debt. I'm, getting, I'm going nerd, nerd mode, long story yeah. short. You can purchase a home without your spouse being on a loan. There you go. Long story short. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Yes. Um, one question I got asked the other day, and I think a lot of people actually, this isn't something that they think about often, is resale value when it comes to mm. a home. Making sure that you get into a home, um, especially when we were in that market we were in last year, there was one home in specific that I remember showing to some clients, and it was up a very steep hill. Like, you mm. couldn't take certain cars up into the driveway, and led right off of like a busy highway too so it was a really unique uh location and they were interested in the home but the uh spouse needed to get up for work at about 4 a.m and he was thinking to himself like what if it's snowy what if it's icy like i don't have anywhere to park at the bottom of this and it's mm -hmm. hard because the house was really great the land was great it had everything but the location was really weird and so considering like if we they had moved forward with this house it had multiple offers it went for well above asking price but how is that going to fare in a normal neutral market where, or even a buyer's market where like this location is not ideal at all? Um, are you going to be able to get that back? So considering those things um, when you go to buy a house is also important. Yes. But then also understanding if there's a, if there's a house that you can put some work into that would up the resale, oh, yeah. understanding Definitely. that as well. Um, the potential of it all. Yes. Yeah. They also ask, uh, is it better to buy like in a planned development or development in general or like not in a development? And that's going to be dependent. I mean, you're going to find buyers for both. If you're, you're, the buyer pool goes down as like the more and more acreage you get because there are people that want that kind of a house and a lifestyle, mm -hmm. but not, it's not for everybody, but also living in a community isn't for everybody. So it's just dependent. Um, there's still going to be good resale wise. There's just other factors that you'll want to consider. Absolutely. But like, if there's an overall theme to what we're saying is each person, each person's financial situation, each person's preferences is going to dictate exactly. home, how long you should own a home, the, just everything involved. And that's, yeah. that's the point of having quality relationships with the people you work with and having them understand your situations to help guide you in the correct direction based on what you've told the people who work in the industry. Mm -hmm. exactly. um, and that's every, everything's a personalized um, touch when working with people in real estate. Yeah good people in real estate. That's the fun and the not so fun thing about this industry is there is no black or white. There's 
everything is different. Every situation is different. Every buyer is different. Every seller is different. There's nothing the same about like almost any transaction that you work and any client that you work with. So. Yeah. Yeah. At, the, at face value, I've, I've been, I was told one time, like my job must be like monotonous and I'm like, no. Heck no. <laughs> even just looking at numbers for a loan file, like things can change, like how we need to put together and structure a loan um, versus like what makes people tick? Is it, cash to close? Is it monthly payment? Some people yeah. only care about cash to close and they're like, Oh, we can take on the, this amount of payment. Um, but that's getting to know people and actually having just conversations with people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have any other ones? I think I have one more. Go for yours. I kind of ran through my last three there in that last little bit. Oh, just like random things that may impact your ability to purchase a home. Like what are some things that you can try to avoid doing before, while you're on the like, preparation aspect of your home buying journey. Um, mm -hmm. Credit's a big one. Saving money is a big one. And I think those are the two, the two biggest ones just to yeah. keep in mind. Um, and so if you need help with either of those things, you can reach out to either of us, but making mm -hmm. sure that you're not doing random little things that you might not even be aware are hurting your credit, for example. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, oddly enough, like if you close an account, like a, a, a credit card right. where you had it at zero or, or you paid it off. Like I want to close it. That's one less line of credit and it actually hurts your credit in the short term. Um, yeah. So if you're on, if you're in a short term to purchase a home, you know, two months and that knocks your credit score down, that might affect qualifying or a change in interest rate. Um, and then also I, I posted something today of like, just not taking on large monthly, monthly debts. Mm -hmm. um, if the goal is a home, try to understand the, the steps that you need to take to, to make that happen. Um, it's, it's funny because it's like, as a loan officer, we care about your car payment, but the car dealership doesn't care about your house payment. So that's not exactly. Good. Yeah, exactly. Sweet. Well, we should have said this at the beginning, but if you have any questions or wanted to add anything, like <laughs> always, as always, you're more than welcome to. But... So it's been a good one to ask questions. It's, uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Whatever. Oopsies. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll be back. We were talking last night about, what the timeline is for this and maybe take the last week or two of December off, but we'll be back for the next couple of weeks up until then. Um, and if you have any topics that you want to learn about any questions about real estate, you can always reach out to either of us. We are here as a resource for you. We're excited to help you in the process when the time comes. So don't ever hesitate to reach out. Yes, please, please, please reach out. Love. Any and please give us topics. <laughs> yeah. Give us any sort of inspiration that Anything. you can. Um, don't leave it on us, guys. We're going to bring up yeah. stuff you don't want to hear. You exactly. do want to hear. Yeah. But no, thanks th Thanks for everyone who uh, hopped on. Um, yeah. As always, uh, we appreciate you watching or, or listening and uh, hope to keep bringing some info and value. Yeah, definitely. And with that, have an amazing week. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Okay, bye. Bye.